They say in life, it's the little things that matter the most, or it's a tiny spark that ignites the greatest fire. Those thoughts come to mind when we think of the life and times and great success of Billy Howard Miles. As the story is told, sometime in the 30s when Billy was eight or nine, he skipped school, rode his bike over eight miles along dusty, dirty country roads just to hang on the fence and watch the airplanes take off from J.O. Dockery Airport near Stuttgart, Arkansas. He was born in Lodge's Corner and has always wanted to be a pilot. He used to skip school and ride his bicycle to the J.O. Dockery Airport in Stuttgart. He hung on the fence and he watched all the pilots in their airplanes. But not one time did a pilot ever walk over and said, hey, little boy, would you like to come look at my airplane or take a ride around the patch? Consequently, when he became a pilot, he worked really hard trying to recognize those kids on the fence. He gave rides for free. He mentored young pilots. He taught for free. And there are people here tonight who are recipients of that. I know I was his daughter. So when I got my license, he pounded it in me that I should never Ignore the kid on the fence. The fire was lit and Billy Miles was on his way into aviation history. At just 15 years old and the future farmers of America in school, Billy sold a hog to pay the $6 an hour for flying instruction. That was a plane and a pilot instructor. After just six hours of instruction, Billy went for a medical exam so he could get a license. But when he had to get his parents' permission for the medical report, it was over. Mama wouldn't have it. But this setback didn't stop him. Billy joined the Air Force at age 20 in hopes of becoming a pilot, but his eyesight would only allow him to be a left gunner on a B-29 bomber. But at least he was flying. He was gunner on the B-29 and served during the Korean conflict. While in the Air Force and stationed in Arizona, Billy had his girlfriend, B. Bightley, take a bus to Arizona, and they were married. Three years after marriage, the couple moved back to Arkansas to Pine Bluff, where Billy went to work at Grider Field there. He served as assistant manager, and in exchange for flying time, Billy washed and changed oil and planes in his free time. Billy did his original solo in 1954 in a nose gear PA-11. He soloed next in a 1946 Taylor Craft, and after two years, he was carrying a commercial ticket and had only spent $35 out of pocket. By June of 1956, with only 200 hours in his logbook, Miles had offers to fly for two reputable flying operations. He chose to go with Mayan and Dean because they used 115 horsepower cutback Cubs and Billy felt more comfortable in those. He was one of 12 pilots in a firm that had 36 planes. Billy cut his flying teeth with this operation, and after almost six years, he moved to Ag Air, owned by Johnny Mullis, where he eventually flew a Call Air. Billy's daughter Rhonda remembers her taking him to work with her when she was just four years old, locking her in the chemical hopper while he flew to the job. Once there, the loader boys were her babysitters. Billy moved the family to Grady, Arkansas to run a spin-off operation for Mullis in 1962. His wife, B ran the office, and the two kids, Kevin and Rhonda, as soon as they could count, walk a straight line, and hold a flag, were put to work field flagging. In 1978, Billy bought the ag operation from Mullis and renamed it Dirty Bird Incorporated. That nickname stuck on Billy, and for many, Billy Miles would always be Dirty Bird. In his signature white slip-on tennis shoes, the operation grew, and he had a reputation as one of the best ag pilots anywhere. He hired his own flaggers and made sure they were as precise as possible. In his spare time, he began stunt flying, attending air shows all over the country. Billy Miles' Granny Cub Act was unique and famous across the Mid-South. But I'd be going down the highway from between Pine Bluff and Grady, and I could hear this big thump on the roof of my car. And it was my dad in the ag plane with the tire bouncing it on the roof of the car, letting me know that I was caught and my pay was docked. Thanks, Dirty Bird. He later became an air show announcer and 
avid aerial photographer, capturing the history of ag aviation in Arkansas. Friends remember Billy Miles as a man who never met a stranger and a man who never forgot the little boy on the fence near Stuttgart. He always helped others. Hoping to end his flying days without an accident, in 1989, his plane had a bit of a confrontation with some guy wires on a cross-county power line, and he was out for some time. But he never stopped working, sending instructions from his hospital bed to his daughter, who passed them on to the operation so it could keep going. One year when Billy was short a pilot, he flew 1,300 hours, and he retired with over 39,000 hours, most of it at ground level, lower than the power lines. Billy's son, Kevin, an avid and accomplished pilot, was killed in an airplane accident in 1988. His daughter, Rhonda, went on to become a corporate pilot and flew executives of Fortune 500 companies and high-profile entertainers like Reba McIntyre and Hank Williams, Jr. Billy Dirty Bird Miles retired to Nashville, Tennessee and lived to be 92. Sadly, he flew into the heavens just weeks before his induction ceremony at the Arkansas Aviation Hall of Fame 2022. The little boy on the fence fulfilled his dream and soared into aviation history. <laughs>